Hi there again, Libra Dedici here from astrology.com.au. For those of you that are new, thanks for joining. It's a crazy time. And uh, in this brief session, I'd like to <clears throat> start the, the graphic chart here so you can see exactly what's happening, particularly with this commencement of the month and the lunar nodal conjunction here in your 10th house. Naturally, a completely new approach to the way you're working, to the way you see yourself in your work. Also, you'll see that as this moon swings around here, around the 7th, 8th, it gets stronger. <clears throat> and the moon for you is important. The reason I'm talking about this is because of its direct connection to this 10th house. It rules the sign of Cancer. And the full moon on the 8th is going to impact not just on yourself, but on the way other people perceive you this is a good <coughs> pardon me this is a good aspect and one which should lift your professional opportunities at this point you're probably wondering how but things can turn on a a penny as they say so keep the faith be positive and you'll see that by the 8th 9th some new developments will take place You've got to keep your mind a little more fresh, a little more optimistic, because this Mars-Saturn combination is also a very important transit at this time in your life. In fact, you notice here Saturn at just zero, one degree of Aquarius means for the first time in almost 30 years, it's moving in back into this position. This has a strong impact on family, in particular children, love affairs if you're not yet married, but <clears throat> in the heat of a new relationship. And when this moon swings around, it's a dark moon, you may find yourself in some sort of frustrating scenario. Uh, that's coming here, it transits through this opposition to Venus. You might start to feel the impact of this during this opposition phase around the 11th and 12th of the month. Then some matters at home. Of course, we're spending a lot of time at home right now. This, again, con contact with the descending node or the past karma point in your fourth house. You notice here too that the node is stationary around this time. So really tying up a lot of loose ends having to do with your past affairs with family, mother, domestics, real estate, building, property, that type of thing. Fixed assets also like your car, your boat, the bigger sort of items. And here around the 15th is when this issue with children and your creative mind may come to the fore as a result of the contact with the moon and Mars and Saturn. Fortunately, I'm pleased to say, you know, after last month when this Mars-Saturn combination was together, that is really frustrating. It doesn't allow you to move forward. It brings in a whole lot of passive aggression. Uh, and the moon will trigger that again, but it moves away quite quickly. Health matters around the 18th and 19th need to be looked at. Uh, don't guesstimate what's going on. And I'm not saying you've got coronavirus. This can be any sort of problem that you've postponed, dental work, optometry. Go and get that sorted out because here there can be some confusion, some worry when the moon transits the position of Neptune in this sixth place, the sign of Pisces, which is a difficult area for you, Libra. Relationships take on a whole new complexion, as as does the uh, intimacy component, the sexuality of your relationships. Moon with Mercury here in your seventh house, 21, 22, it gets stronger around the 22nd, look at that. And then the Moon will make its way into the transiting Sun's position in the eighth house, very close to Uranus. And this is the new moon taking place on the 23rd, as you can see, right next to Uranus. So some brilliant new strategies, some tactics that you can use to draw your partner closer to you, to work on yourself and address those issues that have been holding you back, keeping you frustrated. And that may be at one of those aha moments, that instantaneous epiphany where something just arises out of the blue and you gain some valuable insights through that. The Moon-Venus combination here towards the end of the month uh, is very nice. 
thoughts of travel. I don't know whether you're going to be able to travel yet. I think we're still all in lockdown, but uh, there's no harm in planning. And then the moon swings back around into its base position at where it was when the month started. So I think you're going to have some very quick insights this month. And as the month completes, this combination here shows that your mind is starting to adjust to the cultural sort of tone that's around you. And that could be shifts in the way you're doing work, uh, the way you deal with your employer, because this 10th house has to do with uh, employment matters. Notice here the very last day of the month may be rather intense as a result of the Jupiter-Pluto combination. And so this influence may cause you to be rather obsessive about work. And uh, the advice from me to you is don't get embroiled in power plays or underhanded tactics or behind the scenes um, maneuvers. Keep your hands clean and just keep your head down, uh, down and your butt up. Things will work out well for you. Join me at the new look astrology.com today. I'm really, really proud. It's taken us seven or eight months to rebuild this thing for the third time. We had a lot of trouble in the past, but it's looking great. It's firing up quickly. We've got a whole lot of other pages there, such as the weekly horoscopes. We've got the free natal report, a much bigger and better one, very comprehensive, free, and you can print it out. And of course, subscribe. Drop me a note if you want a personal reading, and I'm going to see you here next month. Stay safe. Bye-bye.